Hey friends, it's Ryland from Rainsford Photography where we are all about growing confidence for you, the wedding photographer. And so today we're gonna to be talking about something pretty basic but super fundamental, cards, memory cards for your camera. Um, what type you need and how to select the best one for what you're gonna be doing. So there are really just three basic things. The type of card, the speed of the card, and the size. So y'all ready? Let's jump in. All right, so the first thing you gotta decide is what type of card do I even need? And really, that just comes down to what does your camera support? So ours takes two SD cards, so surprise, that's what I'm gonna use. Uh, but there are so many other options out there. There's micro SD cards, there's SD cards, there's different types of SD cards, HC, XC, there's compact flash card, there's C fast cards. It's just really hard to decide sometimes which kind do I need. So just make sure that you just ask yourself, what will my camera even support? Micro SD cards are typically for smaller things like drones or aerial cameras or GoPros, things like that. Whereas normal SD cards are more for like normal DSLRs. Uh, and then as you get into like compact flash, that's again more like high level DSLRs. And then the CFast, those are like the fastest ones. Those are for like the professional level um, large format cameras and camcorders. And so we won't really be talking about those. Our cameras take SD cards, they're the most common. So those are the ones we're gonna be talking about. All right, so we figured out what type of card we need. Now let's talk about how to choose the right one for you. And there's really two things here, there's speed and there's size. So let's start with speed. And this is what gets most complicated. There's different types of speeds associated with a card. There's the read speed and then there's a write speed. So read speed is what's usually advertised the big bold numbers on the card, something like 95 megabytes a second, 150 megabytes a second. Now that's awesome, but it can also be a little misleading because really where the read speed becomes most important is just in when you're transferring data from your SD card to your computer. So yes, it helps with like your efficiency afterwards to have a faster card, but really that doesn't help you get more continuous clicks um, on a wedding day. And so what you really wanna care about is write speed. That is when your camera processor is writing data to your SD card, how quickly can it do that? Therefore, how many continuous photos can you take without your camera slowing you down? This is where it gets a little bit more complicated because the write speed is not clearly indicated on your card. There are three different things that are indicated on the card though. Traditional SD speed class, and this is signified by a C with a number inside of it. So there's four types, C1, C2, C4, and C10. Um, and so really all that means is a minimum write speed of one stands for 10 megabytes a second, or one stands for one megabyte a second, two for two megabytes a second, four for four megabytes a second, etc. 10 for 10 megabytes a second. That's a minimum write speed. But then there's another factor, there's a UHS speed class. And this is signified by a U with a number in it. So typically there's only two types, you'll see U1 or U3 um, with the number inside the letter. And that really indicates either a minimum write speed of one designating 10 megabytes a second, so it's the same as that C10, or U3, which means a minimum write speed of 30 megabytes a second. Now, really all that tells you is what the minimum is. And it's just like a minimum guaranteed average. But what it doesn't tell you is what the average read speed or write speed actually is. So that's where you actually have to look at the product description of the SD card that you are selecting on Amazon or Adorama or wherever you're buying your SD card. And it'll tell you um, what the maximum write speed is. And so we talked about how read speed isn't really as, as meaningful on a wedding day as write speed, but write speed and read speed do increase together. And so usually that big dip bold designation in the top right corner for read speed does indicate how fast it will also be able to write, but you definitely wanna look at the product description when buying one to confirm what that maximum write speed is. So for example, Typically with like 150 megabyte per second read speed, you'll get a like 90 to 95 megabyte per second write speed. Um, even though that's not clearly indicated in those classifications of 
U3, meaning a minimum of 30, like the difference between 30 megabytes a second and 90 megabytes a second is huge, but the classification just doesn't really match up with the reality. Then the third thing you need to look at related to speed is there is a UHS type, and that is indicated by a Roman numeral one or Roman numeral two, right next to the SD little designation on the card. So UHS one designates kind of the traditional UHS SD card type. You can also tell by looking on the back and it just has one row of pins. Uh, UHS two is allows for a little bit faster write and read speeds because if you turn it around, you'll see there are two rows of pins. The thing to be careful here about though, is that not all cameras um, can actually support, the, have the hardware installed for the two rows of pins so it can actually utilize the extra speed you get from a UHS-2. That doesn't mean you can't use a UHS-2, it'll just be limited by your camera, not by the card. Now let's talk about what is the appropriate size SD card that you need for a wedding day. So we have found through our 100 plus weddings that 64 gigabyte cards um, give us everything that we need, enough space for 98% of our wedding days. There's maybe been two wedding days when we ran out of space on an SD card, and that's because I took way too many photos of the reception. But that's my problem, not yours. So, 64 gigabytes has been plenty for us. Now, we actually use two 64 gigabyte cards, one to write the RAW files and another to write the JPEG files. And in a different video, we'll talk about just kind of like SD card management. But because we have two slots, we use two 64 gigabyte cards um, with that minimum write speed of about 90 megabytes per second. Um, and so that we have found to be totally sufficient for everything that we need on a wedding day. But again, Make sure that you compare that to the actual hardware that you have, the DSLR that you have, and what it's capable of supporting, um, and read those product descriptions on your SD cards before you buy them, so you make sure that you're getting exactly what you need. There's also just a great ton of great resources out there for finding like the best card for your specific camera type. So I would definitely recommend doing a little bit of research before you buy your SD cards, because otherwise, you may run into a situation where you're trying to take pictures and your camera's slowing you down and weddings move so fast that you do not want that to happen. So guys, this one has been short and sweet, but I hope that that's been really helpful um, just to help you make a quick decision because it doesn't need to be too complicated. Subscribe to our channel so you can see that next SD card um, video when it comes out and all of our future content. I hope that you found this really valuable. Uh, if you have, send us a comment or like it for us and we'll see you next time. Thanks friends, bye.